Welcome back, everybody. We are going to finish up the building of the five gallon self watering bucket system in this part two series. We're going to go through an entire build from start to finish. This build is going to be different from the other videos. I actually had to re engineer the bucket so the bucket could basically be something you can build in buying all your parts from the store rather than me using slurpy cups and this and that it was too confusing for people we re-engineered it to the point where you can buy everything you need and literally build this from scratch from the store and you're done with it so basically what it's going to look like is this so we're going to go through this in sections we're going to show you how to build the pail first and then we're going to support system yes you are going to need a support system no matter what it is you grow in there peppers tomatoes kales cabbages it doesn't matter it needs to be tied up because these pails like any other self-watering bucket system will become top heavy and the wind can blow them over it pretty easily so you want to make sure you build this in such a way where it's there's a nice balance and feng shui to it right we want to make sure that you know we have a, a well-built system and yet it's not going to be overly engineered so this is what i came up with and it seems to be working pretty good there are probably a couple other minor improvements that we can do to it but for now this is definitely the new design for 2022 it's definitely superior in all my other designs and let's get on with it and let's start with the pail and get into the details okay so before we actually get started with the pail and talking about some of the parts that you're going to need and what's involved uh, let's first discuss the tools and the stuff you're going to need in order to get started first thing you're going to need is a drill i have a dewalt drill here you're going to want to make sure you have a phillips head bit driver tip for it the other thing you're going to want to make sure you have is a dremel drill or you can use something else we'll talk about that when we get to that but if you have a dremel you want to go with this this is the best tool for the job you want a pair of scissors you want a tape measure or a ruler of some type you want an arbor so this is an arbor for the hole saws so you want to make sure you get an arbor like this it has a standard pilot bit in the middle so make sure you get the arbor you probably already have one it doesn't have to be half inch drive it could be three eighths whatever you have it's not major drilling and you want to get a three and a half inch hole saw and you want to get a one and a quarter so three and a half inch hole saw and a one and a quarter inch hole saw you need a half inch drill bit a three eighths drill bit and i believe this is like an eighth inch drill bit it doesn't have to be exactly eighth inch. it's just got to be big enough to pass some wire through and you need those three drill bits it doesn't have to be eighth inch it could be a little bigger than eighth inch something like that you also need a marker a good sharpie is good make sure you got yourself a sheetrock knife or a razor knife uh, a good tape measure i think i said that already and you're going to want to get a tool like this to cut your tubing your pvc tubing and everything else so i just wanted to quickly show you the tools that you're going to need and then we'll get into the material that you're going to need in the next section okay so let's talk a little bit about the material you're going to need to do this project obviously you need a five gallon bucket you can get these from lowe's that's the ones that i use they have the nice big thick rim on them one thing i want to point out about the buckets nowadays as opposed to the older buckets these buckets are much less light permeable so you, you can still see there's light through it but nowhere near as bad as it used to be one of the problems with these buckets is that the light can really get through it and then the water underneath starts to build like an algae in it the unfortunate thing is one of the updates to this video is to actually paint the bottom of this with black unfortunately i did not grab any paint so i can't show you here but you can do that i'm not sure if these buckets are actually dark enough now where the light really doesn't permeate enough through it where it's going to cause the algae problem however it was doing it with the older style buckets these newer buckets here it may not work so the other thing you're going to need is a lid these are the newer lids as opposed to the older lids so yeah you got your lid you're going to want to get some landscape fabric uh, or something very close to it but this is what i use for the build is landscape fabric it's a very important part of this whole project it really makes the job nice and neat as you can see here it makes a real nice top i call it top mulch but it's really a more of a protective covering that covers the top mulch and it protects you from uh, squirrels chipmunks and everything getting in there so uh yeah this is a good material and you can also see below it's down there as well so i use it for a lot of stuff so yeah definitely pick yourself up a roll of that it doesn't cost more than like 10 or 15 bucks you're going to want to use two inch pvc pipe these are approximately four and three quarters long okay four and three quarters long you're going to want four of those okay we're not going with the coupling 
We're going to go with pipe in this case because the couplings are too short. These are going to be a little taller than my, my original design. These are a little bigger for reasons with the new design. I wanted to raise it up a little bit more and just leave, leave a little more space of an air gap between the bottom of that lid and where the water is going to sit. So I want a little bit more of an air gap for many reasons. And the same thing with this. You're going to want this one here to be 4 and 5 eighths inches. 4 and 5 eighths which is between four and a half and four and three quarters. The reason why I want it a little smaller, as you can see, I want that lid to kind of press down a little bit because these lids, they don't sit 100% the way I'd like them to sit because I'm sitting these lids down like this. And you can see that the top part of the plastic is actually raised. So if you add all this other stuff into it, you need that little bit of a, a gap between it. These are your atypical, I don't know how many ounce Dixie cup this is. That's, I forgot to check for the, the weight on that. Well, uh, it'll be in the description. The hole for the lid that we're making with the hole saw, just so you know, that's the same size hole, whether you use it with this design or my original designs, the hole is the same. It's just, we, the only thing we're changing is we're not using the old wicking cups. We're gonna use this instead. You're gonna want a piece of wire, like house wiring. Right, this is 12 inches long, this is 12 gauge. 12 gauge is good, I wouldn't, you can use 14 gauge, but 12 gauge is better, it's nice and strong, and it, it just works better. It's a very strong material, and you'll see why. So yeah, you want a piece of wire 12 inches long, and uh, we'll show you how we're gonna apply that. And then we're gonna want screws, like this. You're gonna want a box of these screws. You wanna make sure you get this kind of screw. I like these screws, because they got a pan head on them right you see the pan head these are real nice you'll see how they they work really good with this you see how i put them on here just so we're clear on this don't buy self-tapping these are not self-tapping okay these are regular thread end okay you do not want self-tapping want to make sure i'm clear on that because they put them right next to each other, and if you're not paying attention, you're going to buy self-tapping, and you don't want that. You want non-self-tapping. You want the regular ones like this. They work absolutely perfect. And the only other thing you're going to need is some string, and I'm using bailing wire, bailing string, whatever you want to call this stuff, twine. I'm just using this. This is what I use generally just around the yard. So, yeah, you want to use some twine, and the only purpose for the twine is for this in the end. And we'll explain to you how this all works. Now, this this works pretty good. It's just, I don't know how, I may have to uh, work on this a little bit to get it a little better. That is all you need for your material. We can get on with the next part. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to define the hole that we're going to use as the drain hole for this. And basically what we need to do is determine where we're going to put the hole and how high we're going to make that hole. So in order for us to make this hole, we want to basically put this hole perpendicular to the handle. So we want it on this side, right? We don't want it, we don't want that hole on the bottom of the handle. We want that hole right in the middle. I'm generally using the Lowe's pail. As you can see, there's a, a Lowe's thing there. From there to the bottom of that pail roughly is about four inches, give and take. That's basically the center. Right above that, you want to drill your hole. So let's do that. You want to get your drill. Get your half inch drill bit. We're gonna drill a hole right about center. Now, just be careful when you're drilling with such a big drill bit. If you push too hard, you can actually crack that pail. So you don't wanna do that because it will leak. It won't hold water. So now you're left with a hole like this. Now, what I found was by inserting a small piece of PEX tubing, I find that it eliminates some of the stuff, the residual rundown that's going to build up as the water leaks out and it rains and starts running out of that hole. It kind of looks unsightly, so I don't particularly like the look of that. So I like to add a piece of 5 8 PEX. Now, the hole that we drilled was half inch. So basically, we just got to kind of ream that hole out a little bit. If you're uncomfortable doing that and you're maybe a lady or something like that and you kind of want somebody else, you might want to get somebody else to do this part for you. But basically what you do, just take your drill bit like this and you're just going to hone that hole out a little bit. Okay. 
You may have to do it a couple times. Well, that was a little bit too big for me, but that's okay. I can put a little bit of uh, tape on it. For now, that's good enough. So as you can see, you'll have a little piece of tube that sticks out. So when it drips, it's not running down the pail. It's dripping out and going on the ground, right? That's kind of what we want. All right, so that's that. So we determined the height. We determined where to put it. And that's all you need to do to the pail for now. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to cut our lid. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And uh, again, if you're a lady and you're uncomfortable working with tools like this, you might want to get somebody else to cut the lid for you. But I'm going to show you how to cut this lid using a Dremel drill. Okay, so it's really not that hard to do it the way I'm going to show you. It just takes a little practice. Anybody who knows how to work with these tools can pretty much figure this out. So in general, there's quite a few settings on here. In general, if you go too high, it can be too hot. So I like to go about middle or just below the fastest speed, somewhere in there. And that's good enough. So the first thing you want to do is turn your drill on. And what we're going to do... Before I do it, what we're going to do is we want to cut a line about an eighth of an inch all the way around this rim. And it's very easy to do if you do it the way I show you, right? So you're just going to do it by eye, and you're just going to kind of cut an eighth of an inch all the way around the rim. In the end, you're going to want that cut to kind of end off. If you see how these tabs kind of stick out a little bit and then they drop down, you want that cut to end somewhere around where that tab would be, if you could see them tabs. So if you see that, you turn it around, that's roughly right about here somewhere. It doesn't have to be perfect, and even if it's slightly out a little bit, we're going to trim this uh, plate up when it's done and clean it up, and I'll show you how we do that. So let's get started cutting it. Okay, so before I continue, I just want you to see that I basically scored it first. At this point, if you're really uncomfortable working with the tool or it's giving you too much of a hard time, uh, then at this point, you could probably use your sheetrock knife to stick it in there and kind of finish off the cut. Uh, I don't recommend doing that, but some people might not be comfortable working with the tool. And the other thing is, is when you're cutting this, you don't want to do this in one solid cut. You want to score it first the way I showed you, and then you want to make your cut. Main reason is this plastic, for some reason, it kind of melts very easily. So you want to get the score started, clean off all the junk on it, and then we're going to do it. We're going to proceed with the other cut. Just break it loose from the rest, and you're going to end up with this. That's perfect. Now it looks kind of rough. Just take your 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 scissors like this and just go. And there you go, voila, perfect, right? And so this is how it's gonna go inside. So we're gonna drill our hole for this next. It's already marked for you, basically, you can see right there, we're gonna drill a hole right in there. And so we're gonna use this. This is our arbor, and it already has a drill bit in it for our hole saw, so let's drill that hole with this first, and then we'll put the hole saw in it.
and then you'll end up with something like this okay we're going to drill one two three four holes here and then one two three and i'm going to skip the fourth hole because or a fill tube is going to go there so we're going to drill seven holes in here so i'm just going to do it by eye and you'll see me do it You'll end up with something like this. We left the last hole out here because we're going to do our fill tube here. Okay, so we're going to drill that now. Keep in mind, if you're going to use a larger fill tube, like one inch, you're going to have to change the size of the hole saw based on what you're using. I'm using three quarter inch pipe. And for this demonstration, we're using a one and a quarter inch hole saw. Again, we're going to do this by eye, so don't go crazy over it. We're just going to line it up with that hole all the way down here. And we want this drill bit to be on the inside of that rim. And that's it. That's your plate. And your plate is now finished. You'll be able to use this cup as your wicking cup. We decided to go with this because it was much easier. And it literally fits inside that hole. So snug, it's ridiculous. It's almost like it was made for it. It was just happened dumb luck, to be honest with you. Look at that. That is absolutely, it doesn't come out. It stays nice and fitted and sealed. It doesn't get better than that. And the, the cups are good, but these are like a kind of a stiff plastic. So they will crack eventually. But you can just keep buying new cups every year or once every two years. They'll last you about two years, I would imagine, three years. And then you'll probably have to change them after that. And that's it. Okay, so let's go on to the next part, which is the... Which is the um, let's go on to the next part, which is this stuff here. Okay, so the next part we want to do is cut your pieces of PVC and get that all pre prepped now. So there's not much to do with that other than getting them cut and we want to drill some holes in that stuff. So uh, let's do that now and then we'll move on to the next stage. So first thing you want to do is cut four pieces of two inch PVC. And these are going to measure four and three quarters. I'm not sure if you could see that. Hopefully you could. Four pieces, four and three quarters. Then you're going to want to cut one piece of four inch that is four and five eighths. Not sure if you can see that, but four and five eighths for this, four and three quarters for that. You definitely want this, the four inch to be a little bit smaller than the piping because you want to make up for this little bit of meat that's sticking out here. So it does cause some problems if you don't do that. So a little smaller is better, right? It'll sit nice. So. The next thing I want you to do is take your two inch PVC and just basically drill a hole through it somewhere in here. And we want to do that to every one of those pieces. So just take all four pieces and just drill a hole directly through each one. You just want to make sure you got a hole all the way through it. Also, too, when you put these in your pail, you want these holes to be, when you drill them, you're drilling them close to one side, right? So you want, just want to make sure that these are closer to the bottom and not like this, all right? You want them like that, okay? All four of them. Yeah, with this, you just want to drill one, two, or you can drill four holes and it doesn't matter. One or two holes are generally pretty good. This is just to make sure you get good water flow into this section because this is going to be receiving your wicking cup. So you want to make sure that you have that in place. And when you're done, you're going to end up with four pieces like this with the holes on the bottom. And we're going to want to set it up like so. It doesn't matter which way to hold face. Just like that's fine. And our plate is going to sit like that, nice and tight, right on the top. That's exactly what you want to see. 
So let's get into the next step and we'll talk about the cup. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get your cup prepped. And basically with these cups, the only thing I'm doing with them is drilling one hole in the bottom. And I'm going to just put a little piece of that fabric in there. You just want to put something on the bottom of the cup so the soil is not getting washed out of, um, of that hole. And yeah, if you get a lot of rain and the water is pouring through the center of your soil, it could start washing out soil. Uh, we don't want that. We want to keep the soil in there. So yeah, stick something in there. I'm using just a small piece of that. That's fine. That'll work. And basically, all you got to do is just make sure that that fits in that hole. And that's basically it with that part of it. The only thing we got to do now is cut your, your fill tube material. Okay, so let's talk about the fill. I've been making these fill tubes give and take 25 inches, but this one's about 26, 27. The reason why I'm making these fill tubes so long like this is so I don't have to bend down to fill it up. I could just walk over with my hose while I'm standing up and just put my hose right in the top of that thing and fill up the pail. Done. Right? I don't want to make it so I'm having to get bend all the way down to the ground. Filling up 40 or 60 or 80 pails, uh, it's just too much work. So I want to fill them while I'm standing up and just do it by hand. And uh, that's why I make them this long. You don't have to make them this long. That's the way I like to make them. Also, too, again, this is three-quarter, 24 inches long. And also, too, on the end of it, you just want to cut a small notch on there, about a 45-degree angle. It's no big deal. You can cut it on a hand saw. Just, you don't want it to be a flat end sitting on the bottom. You want to make sure you got an open end on the bottom. And you're, and you're good. You shouldn't have a problem with it. And this piece is generally going to be sitting inside this hole. And that's how the inside of it's going to look. And that's pretty much the nuts and bolts. The only other thing we want to do is cut a piece of fabric for this now. And then use that to put together on top. And, uh, and then we can move on to the next stage by actually assembling it. So let's cut that fabric. Okay, so let's cut the piece of fabric we're going to use for this new design. I really tightened it up easy. It makes it look nicer. It's easier to form and uh, that sort of thing. So basically what we want to do is we want to cut a template of our plate out, basically. Nothing too complex. You just want to lay your plate upside down like this. Take your marker and trace it out. Trace out your hole in the middle. Trace this out. Put an X in the middle of this. And that's it. Now you just cut it out. Let me see. I didn't get that too good here. This is, if you miss a little bit, you could always go back and just kind of retrace it. All right. So now we got that. So start cutting it out. Doesn't have to be exact. A little bigger is all right. Okay, so once you cut it out, you'll end up with a basic shape like this. That's what you'll end up with that. Now we need to cut that big hole out. So how I do that, is I fold this in the middle like this. You want to line up your lines over here. You want the lines, you can see the lines over here. Where I, you want to you want to line, see how these lines, see how I line them up? You see, you can go, you can line them up like that, and then you want to fold it again and line those lines up. And that'll get you pretty close. So let's cut that out. And in the end, you'll end up with your, with your hole cut out perfectly. Now with this one, we're not going to cut that out. We're just going to cut it a slice in it. Basically, you just want to take your scissor. Don't go past that mark. You want to make sure you stay within here. You don't want to go past that. 
we want this to be a tight fit this part here right you do that again you just want to cut it right up to that mark right so that way when we're ready we can just stick our tubing and just basically stick it right in and you have a very tight fit around this tube we want that to, to be as tight as possible around that tube right so no dirt's going to get through and around that okay so the next thing we want to do is start putting the pieces of that inside this pail and uh, that way we could get the inside assembled. So first thing you want to do is get the center, grab that. Again, keep make sure that those holes are down facing towards the lower end of the pail. Same thing with all of these, you want to keep them. And I'll explain why this is the way it is. And you want to line your pail up so your handle is like towards your belly, right? So this is how we're going to assemble this. Make sure you line the pail up so it's in this direction. See how my handle is, right? We want that. We want that handle directly, you know, parallel with us, right? So we want that right in front of us. And while we're doing that, we're going to set our pieces up with the holes to the bottom, right? You don't have to line the holes up or anything. Just set them up like that with the holes to the bottom. And what we're going to do is, from this point here, that's pretty much it. You don't need to do anything more with that. Just take your lid now. And we're going to line this lid up very carefully. This, this lid is very important to line up. And so what we're going to do here is we are going to line that hole up so it's just on one side of this pail. And the reason why we're doing that is when we're done, we want this tube to be like this. And when we lift our handle up, it's going to be nice and tight to the tube like that right so it's going to be nice and straight up and the tube will be just to the side so we want that tube to be just on one side of that metal it could be on either side I'm, I'm picking this side of it to do it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tube I'm going to look at the hole and I'm going to look at my handle here and I can see that this is just on the other side of that hole just like that and you could see that this, this plate here has got a very tight fit. It's literally almost watertight because I cut it the way I did. It's very tight. It's, you have to tuck it in actually by hand, right? You want to make sure that one of those uh, little tubes are going to be underneath that hole. So remember I told you, you want to line that up. I mean, guys, this ain't going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? This is in there almost permanent. Right, so we just want to make sure that that lid's all the way down, tucked in nice and tight. It's very, very tight fit. Just like that. So that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be very, very tight. Next thing you want to do is we're going to take our tube and the piece that we cut here with the cloth on it. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you put the tube into the cloth before you do this because it just makes life a whole lot easier. Stick that tube into this hole like this, right? Just put it down and you're good. You just straighten out your cloth like so. It's going to look something like this. Okay. Then you're going to take your cup like this and you're going to stick it into that hole. And you're going to press that cup down. That cup is going to fit like it's a gasket made for it. It's very tight and it sits perfectly. So that's all you got to do. Kind of hard to do with one hand, but in general you get the idea, right? So it's a little bit off that hole here, but you get the idea. Okay. And then what I would do at the next point from here, once you get this far, you're going to want to fill this up with dirt, which we're not ready to do yet. I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to do that in a separate video because we don't have any of the soil or anything made yet to actually proceed forward. It's just a late, it's a late spring this year and uh, it's not going to be a while before I get dirt, but you can see how I'm building this already. So the next step from here would be to fill it, press it down a little bit, fill it, fill it, and press it down around the hose. I'll do a separate video on filling these and planting. 
but we're right up to this point. Pretend it's got dirt in it. You put your top mulch down like your cocoa choir on top and all that stuff. The next thing we want to do now is actually cut the top cloth for here and how we put the lid on it and then we can get into building the support for it. So let's do the top cloth and the rim and uh, we, we can that way we can finish up this part here. Okay, so let's go and make the top cloth for this. Let's show you how I go about doing it. So the first thing you want to do is grab a pail or the pail, whatever pail you want. Uh, lay your pail down on top of the cloth that you're going to cut. You want to kind of leave it so there's about an inch, an inch and a half all the way around the edges of, you know, at least where it's like short. And then, uh, you know, something like that looks pretty good if you could see that the way it is. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then we're just going to basically trace that out with a marker. So we basically just trace that out. Again, you want to maintain about an inch to an inch and a half around the outside of that circle, all the way around. We want to try to maintain that as much as possible. A little more is okay. You can cut it back later. Just don't cut it too short. You're going to end up with something like this in the end. And so basically what we want to do from here is very similar to what we did there. Just going to want to fold that in half. So your lines that you made line up. See how I see how I line those lines up, right? Want to get them sort of lined up that way. Then we're going to want to fold it again. Like this. And again, you're going to want to line that up. So your your pale, those lines that you made with the marker are basically all lining up all the way across. You're just gonna go by eye. This is where your plant is gonna come through. We just need to cut a little circle off of here. Not not much, don't take off too much because it, it you know, you can very easily make the hole too big. We don't want it too big. You basically just wanna take off about a little corner like that. And then, and then when you're done, you end up with a nice little hole like that in the middle. And that's pretty good. And then, again, by eye, our tube that's going to pass through it is going to be close to the rim. So we want to cut our hole for where this rim is going to be, you know, somewhere close to here. So we're going to do the same thing, except we're just going to cut an X in it, right? I'm sorry. That's up to the line. And that's it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our tube, push it through that hole, just like that. Again, it's going to be a nice tight fit. This is going to help keep everything in place. You may have to just kind of finagle it a little bit until it's right. You know what I'm saying? Something like that is what you want to end up with in the end. The one thing I want to make sure you know before you snap the lid on, make sure your handle is in the right direction. See how my handle is? It's kind of like this. If your handle is like this and I put it in here, and I drilled a hole on this side of the handle, it's going to hit it and you're not going to be able to lift it up. Can you see that? See how it doesn't want, it's in the way. You want to make sure that the handle is on the right side. If you make a mistake, you can just pull it apart and put it right back together. It only takes a second to do. Just make sure you're aware of the fact that the handle is on the right side. It is critical. All right, so yeah, that's it. Your handle's on the right side. Tube is lined up. Next thing you want to do is take your snap ring like this, put that on top. Line up the hole where the tube is the best. That's the side that you want to get, make sure is right. Most importantly, on this side here. That's where you want to get your snap down. All right, so we're going to snap it down there. We'll just kind of pull as tight as we go. And just kind of work it on there. Just pull it through, like you see I'm doing, right? Just keep it taut and just snap it up. And as you can see, you end up with a perfect trampoline for a top. See how that is? 
That's absolutely perfect. Let me show you a little, give you a better view of it. This is perfect uh, a setting. It doesn't get any better than what I just showed you. This is an absolutely perfect assembly. Very similar to that one over there. You can see these tops are like trampolines. And again, the purpose for this is to keep the chipmunks, the squirrels, rabbits, and everything else out of here from digging into your pails and deciding that they want to go and plant black walnut seeds in here. So that just makes life a whole lot easier when you do this. And you can see the way I put this in here with the material holding this together, you can see that this tube is quite strong in place just by that alone, but we're not depending on that. But it does help support the tube and this whole assembly. So now we are as far as we can go with this. Now, one of the next things you can do after you fill it, actually, before you actually put the lid on here, you would want to, you know, plant first, obviously, and then put whatever top mulch you're going to put down in there. Again, I'm going to save that for another video. We're just showing you how the rest of the assembly goes so you can buy all the parts you need. So let's go over to um, the next thing we're going to want to do is prep for the if you look over here, you can see that white hoop that I built. Okay, so that's the next thing we're going to work on. And I believe that's the final stage. So the hoop is the final setting on this. So we're going to we're gonna work on that and then finalize this. And then we're pretty much good and all done. So let's get on with that. Okay, so the next step is going to be making this hoop. Remember, we want to line where the uh, handle is with us. So it's, it's, per it's in parallel with us to the way we're facing it, right? So we got that. You lay, you bring up your handle like so, okay? You bring up your handle like so, and then the next thing we want to do is basically, we want to tie this handle off to here. Now you could leave, at this point you can either leave this tied or if you're not done planting, you're gonna to have to, you're gonna eventually have to uh, plant your plant and take all this apart anyway. The, again, this is just a demonstration to show you how to get this thing set up. Uh, so we're going to want to tie that off mainly because it really does kind of stiffen everything up and this does act as a good stabilizer. So we want to tie that into the system. Okay, so it's easier for me to just explain it to you as the tubing is on here and then I'm just going to show you how I fasten it. So basically what we're going to do with this is we're going to cut a piece of three quarter inch PEX. We're going to round that off and we're just going to screw it into the side of the pail one into this top lip up here, and then one about there. It's gonna be above the water line, so that's about where you want that screw. And you're gonna do that to both sides. And then uh, eventually what we'll do is we'll just tie these off. You can see that the string's loosened up a little bit, but I can untie that and basically just pull it down a little tighter on both sides. That's just gonna shrink, that's just gonna pull down on this handle a little more, which is fine. That doesn't mean anything. It's, it's just going to make it a little wider. That's okay. And one of the other things we have to do here is uh, we got to add something here to tie these wires to. So we're just going to drill a couple holes in that pail, mount that, add the string, and we're done. Okay, so let's, let's drill a couple of holes that we need to drill on each side of the pail so we can tie it down later. So as you can see here, this is pretty much the center of the pail. So if you look really closely... At the top of this pail, you can kind of see where the V's are. So basically, if you look underneath here, I'm not sure if this is able to be seen on camera or not. If you look underneath here, you can see like a, a V pattern. Kind of goes like a V back and forth. Okay. We want to make sure that we're gonna drill on each side of that V. So in the center of this pail, there's a V that lines up perfectly with whereabouts you put your fill, your drain tube on this side. So there's a V that comes out, you wanna drill on each side of that V. So it'll look something like, look something like that. You can see where I marked it. Hopefully you can see that, right? So we're going to drill these two holes, and we're going to do that on both sides. Again, we're going to use that roughly one-eighth, maybe a slightly larger, but about one-eighth. Basically, that's got to accommodate uh, your wiring, and that's really, as long as if the drill, drill bit's just big enough to accommodate your wire so you can slide that through it. That's all it needs to be. The tighter, the better.
So again, you can see on this side, there's roughly a V that lines up dead center. Just do the same thing. You're going to take your wire, that 12 inch piece of wire I told you to cut for like, you know, Romex wire for your house. You told you to cut a 12 inch piece. You're going to want to take that wire and you're going to want to de-sleeve it. You're going to be left with two pieces of wire in the end plus a ground wire. You could save that for later. But you'll have these two pieces to mess with. We're going to take one of these wires, basically fold it in half so it's basically end to end like this. Right? And then you're going to want to stick each end in a hole. Like so. Pull this up to about here, give and take. You know, just, you could do it by eye. I usually like to make it so I can fold it over. Like so. And believe it or not, that is not going to pull out really. I mean, you'd really have to really, really, you know, you can bend those in if you want, but that's not going to pull out. That's good enough for this. It's easy to take apart if you need to. Do the same for the other side. Take your wire, fold it roughly in the middle, slide that through, bend them up. Now this is 12 gauge wire, you could use 14 gauge if you want, it's fine. See what I did? So it's good enough, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to tie it off, you could just bend it up and it's really going to take a lot to pull that out. But if you want to tie it off or, you know, make it a little more secure, you could probably cut these instead of 12, cut them like 16 inches or 18 inches and make it so when it comes through, you can wrap it around if you're that worried about it. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to worry too much about it, but this is generally good. And so let's go and mount our tube. So here's one end of our tube. And basically what we want to do is we want to cut an eight foot piece of three quarter inch PEX tubing. 8 foot piece. So you go to a store, they sell pecs in straight lengths, 10 feet long. You don't even have to cut that. You can just basically fold the 10 foot pieces fine. It's going to be a little taller than what I got, but work with what you got. This, I happen to have rolls of extra tubing, so I'm using what I have. If you're going to the store and you buy a 10 foot piece, just fold the whole 10 foot piece in one loop and then start with screwing it in to the side. So the next thing we want to do is anchor one side of this to the pail. I'm going to start off with a couple of screws. The first side that I generally like to start with is generally the side with the tubing on it, right? So this is leaning to the side a little. That's because it's, it's I, I didn't line it up perfectly. This actually needs to go that way some. So uh, it's no big deal. I could leave that for now. So you want to take your tubing and you want to kind of make sure that your tubing is nice and straight. If there's any loops or holes in it. Do it now. Uh, so what we want to do is take our tubing, touch it to the top of the floor or the table that your pail is sitting on, and then we want to put a screw from here into the uh, pail itself, right up against where the handle is. And then we want to put another screw in here to about here so it's gonna to have to pull it in so got to really reach in here and do this it's not gonna be easy because the old style pails didn't have this lip the new ones have a lip so I literally got to bend that tubing in there Okay, so you can see what it looks like, basically. See how I pulled it in? So now we're gonna pull this over to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side.
Just so you know, and I'll talk about this in a second. And so that's basically what your loop is going to look like. This one's a little bit awk awkward out because the tubing is just, if you look over here, I cut it off of that tubing back there. And that stuff is literally twisted all over the place like a knot. So yeah, I'm going to have to straighten this out. But yeah, it will straighten out. I just got to pull it to where I need it, straighten it. But basically, believe it or not, these screws are good enough for what we're using. And uh, they will hold in place. So yeah, we just need to straighten that out. And uh, basically that's done. So let me cut the two strings for this and sh and put that together and we're all done. Okay, so I just want to mention that in the beginning when I was telling you the materials you needed, I don't believe I mentioned the 10 foot piece of three quarter PEX tubing you're gonna need. And I don't believe I mentioned the piece of three quarter inch fill tube that's gonna be roughly 24 inches long. So I don't believe I mentioned them in the beginning, but you'll see it in the list either in the description or you'll see it in the video somewhere where it gives you the full tools and the full material list and I'll include it there. I just happen to forget doing it. So that's it. That's what you're looking at right there. That's what they look like. Basically with this system, you can just take your pails and you can line them up like this one by one. And you can literally wrap these with your own bird netting or you can wrap them with plastic, like make like a sort of a mini hoop house for it. And you can just line them all the way up, all the way down and do the same thing. You can, you can cover them off to protect them from frost. You also have the ability to grab these when they're full and pick them up just like this and walk around with them. If you have nothing better to do, you can actually walk around your tomato plants all day. So it is modular. And it's very bottom stable because of the way I built this. So it's going to be not so much top heavy, but it's going to be well balanced. That's really it. I mean, there's a lot of advantages to doing it this way. So you can see that's what it looks like from the side. Now, the only other thing that might be an issue is that when you're growing tomato plants and they're going to be generally dwarf varieties, I wouldn't recommend growing indeterminates in here if you're going to grow a dwarf variety of tomatoes in there. And generally what happens is, is dwarfs get very bushy and they branch out all over the place and you don't want to cut those because they're determinate varieties in general and what that means is is that all the branches you're cutting off you're actually eliminating your you're basically eliminating all the fruit so with dwarfs you generally don't want to cut the suckers right so you're going to ed eventually have to tie off these suckers to here somehow you know what i'm saying so uh, i've never really actually worked anything out for it but you could maybe make another loop to go around it, or you could just, like I was doing last year, I was just taking strings and just tying it and holding up each individual branch as they come up. There was probably around six to seven huge branches with like maybe 10 pounds of tomatoes on each one. So you have to really support those pretty good. It, it, it is a little bit challenging with them, but you'll see. We'll show you on the next video when I go to plant this and then... Uh, will give you a, a full view of what, what it takes to actually fill it with the soil, how to pack it, fill it, and then put in the plant and plant it, and, and then actually do the seal. There's a seal that takes place between the plant and the, and, the, and the soil itself. I seal it off so the chipmunks, rats, mice, and rabbits can't get into that hole and then really cause damage even inside. Uh, so we need to seal those holes off, and uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. And that's basically it. Again, you can see as these tubes are right, basically right here. So I don't have to bend over to fill this up. I could just walk over with my hose and go and fill it right there. So no bending over. It's nice the way it is. And uh, you could literally line these all the way up and then just pull your plastic over the top of it at night or once it starts getting chilly. You cover them up. Or if you don't want to do go through all of that trouble, you could just take these and carry them and bring them in your garage at night. There, it's not that much difficulty. I mean, I've moved my pails several times from one end of my driveway to the other based on you know how much light I was getting and how the sun is doing so yeah you can move these anywhere they're very modular 
All right, so that's basically it. The final part, we'll do a part three where we do the planting with the plant and all that. We'll save that for part three and we'll finish up the thing and then we'll show you a complete plant, what it looks like when it's complete. We'll end it there. All right, so anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below if you have any questions or any uh, anything like that. Comment below and uh, that's it. Like, share, and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.